Hello, welcome to Monday Morning Matters live broadcast show brought to you by Magna Craft Consulting Team, anchored by Niyi Dumade, a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. Here, each Monday of every week, we address important, relevant, and actionable topics of interest that will help you and your church grow healthier. And now, meet your host, Niyi Dumade. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. I'm so happy to come your way this Monday morning again. Uh, let's see who is online. Okay, if you are online with me, just drop a chat. Let's see who is online with me. Um, happy new month to everyone. Happy Workers Day. Today is a public holiday in Nigeria. It's to celebrate every worker and we pray for every worker in Nigeria that they are, going, they are going to fulfill their purpose in life in the name of Jesus. So happy new month to everyone, all our viewers, all our friends and loved ones, and happy Workers' Day to everyone in Nigeria. My name is Nii Dumade. I'm the founder and the CEO of Magnicraft Consulting. Magnicraft Consulting is a church consulting firm that helps local churches to get healthier through empirical assessments, trainings, and strategic blueprints. And so I want to welcome every one of you to this live broadcast show. Um, this live broadcast show is powered by Magnicraft Consulting. So I want to welcome everyone to this live broadcast show. And thank you for hooking up with Monday Morning Matters. Every Monday we dish it hot, we dish it fresh, and we dish it good. So um, we're glad that you are part of this live broadcast. And I'm Nii Dumade Game, a certified church consultant with the Society for Church Consulting in the U.S. I'm a lead consultant, founder and the CEO of Magnicraft Consulting. So feel free to show, share your comments, share your views with me, your concerns, 
about your church, how to move your church forward, I'll be glad to just go behind the scene in the chat box to entertain your questions and you will be glad you did. A big thank you to those who are commenting. I do not take it lightly. I love to respond to every comment. Any comment you make is such a value because it's it's your opinion and it matters to you. And so we, th- we say a big thank you to all our uh, commenters online and on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube especially. If you have not joined, subscribe to our YouTube um, channel. Hit the subscribe button down. We are hit. We are trying to hit a, a thousand subscribers. Please do us to join the community and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Something big is going to come up. Two things is going to come up on our YouTube channel. I'm going to do a week long um, um, dish out of some good content. So please so subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and let's build a community together. Share them to your loved ones. Share them to a pastor. Share them to a general overseer, a lead pastor, a church staff, a church worker, a church leader. And I'm sure we are going to they are going to be happy that you did. They're going to be happy that you so do you have someone online? Okay. All right. Is the sound clear? If the sound is clear, can someone just give me a thumbs up in the chat box that we are good with sound and we are good with visuals. We are good with sound and we are good with visuals. Okay. To last month, we took um, for four Mondays. Uh, on the focus was handling church conflict. I never knew that that was going to take um, some attention. But you see, in Monday Morning Matters, I don't take topics I like. I take what people want to hear. I take pressing issues, actionable issues of um, topic of interest, topic of um, concerns that we deal with on this platform. And so last four Mondays in the month of April, we tackled handle church, handling church conflict. And I can tell you that a church, if you don't handle church conflict very well, it can cause decline, it can cause death, it can cause distress, it can cause depression. And so let's go back to um, all our social media handles and you are going to see some of those um videos there are quite a lot of videos we have done on youtube on facebook go there there are quite a lot of them just go there and dig as much as you can and so in handling conflict i want to summarize from there and then today from this monday morning to the end of the month of may we are going to talk on the church god blesses okay what are the things that a church must do to provoke God's blessings. What are the things that a church must do that will provoke God's approval? But then there are five ways I want to wrap up from last month. Five ways conflict can help your church. Conflict can help your church. One, conflict can help your people to grow. Okay, conflict can help your people to grow. They help makes, they are, they, conflict makes you aware of your emotions, aware of your weaknesses, aware of your shortcomings, aware of your strength. Okay, and then two, conflict, avoiding conflict is avoiding truth. Okay, we talked about the traditional theory and the contemporary theory. There has to be a balance. If you're avoiding conflict, then you're going to be avoiding truth. If you're going to avoid conflict, you're going to be avoiding having crucial conversations that is needed for the church to move forward. Crucial conversations that the church it needs to move forward. And so, we need to ensure that thank you for making to me to don't understand that the sound is clear. I'm going to move on fast. Avoiding conflict is avoiding truth, avoiding that crucial, 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 crucial conversation that everyone will have that moment of truth to iron out all gray areas as regards the church. Three, conflict grows young leaders. I can tell you when I was a church ad- administrator of a church. I, we had a lot of conflict, and I can tell you that those conflict made me to see who people are. Okay, how what understands with the dynamics of politics in the church. Conflict grows young leaders. 
conflict grows young leaders you, you see when you have a, a leader that has everything ready everything going smoothly that leader will not grow fast but when you have conflict there is a platform for that young leader to emerge to evolve and to and to, to revamp his character and competencies in life for conflict let's you have the awkward conversation you have been avoiding so when you are in confrontation with someone you are able to say things on a normal good honeymoon stage you will not be able to address and so when you have husbands and wives who are not having conflict then there are some areas that they will never touch because they have been trying to avoid it because of different perspective that are coming as a result of clash then lastly conflict can remove the tension from the team because when you um, either implode or explode the conflict is going to come to terms with the tension that is intended to ease out okay so let's be attentive as we dive in today's uh, issue uh, for today very seasoning hot I'm just going to lay a foundation today and then the next four Mondays of them because we have five Mondays in them in the month of May and so we're going to just dive in straight uh, to just to build a foundation today and then move on from there. Okay? Um, there is no better way to lay a foundation. There is no better way to make a good introduction um, than to get into the scriptures, than to get into the Bible. So the focus today is the God, the, the church, God blesses. What are the things a ch local church must do to provoke God's approval, to provoke God to make sure that yes, God's hand is upon your church to uh, to, to 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 have a a backing of heaven that what you are doing as a church is actually blessed by God. What are, are the things to do to provoke God blessings? Because I must tell you here for for, um, for free that it's not every church that God blesses. It's not every church that God approves of. There are some churches that they are called churches, but they are not really churches because God is not exalted, because God is not glorified, and because God has not blessed that church. So there are qualities, there are characters, there are futures that provokes God's blessing over a church. There are kind, there's some things a church must do because I can tell you that who you are and what you do can provoke what God wants to do in the church and so we need to go to the scriptures and the scriptures where was the early uh, where, where, where was the church started that's the early church the early church had god's blessing the bible says they were together in one accord in one accord and then the holy spirit came baptized them and you can see that there was approval from heaven the early church had god blessing and if we want to have the blessing of god in our congregation in our churches we need to do what the early church did we need to make sure that when we gather together we're actually gathering not because of the set man not because of any power blocks not because of any political cause but because of jesus what is the foundation of the church is jesus okay now that's what the early church and see as a church consultant what we try to do is that we look at the early church as being descriptive in scriptures and then we try to see how that can be prescriptive or, or although we try to make it contextual to where the church is located and so when you go to Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2 you're going to see how the church was birthed how the church was born rather and so the blessed how the church also the early church got the blessings of God so what is what is a church now we have the church that is universal, the big C, the big C church, okay? Now, the church is a summation of, the, of all the local churches in all our cities in the world. And so the church, um, usually which I like to call them local churches, okay? The church, that's the universal church, cannot die, okay? It cannot die, but the local church can. And the, the, the local church can, can might not die get the blessings and the approval of God. I'm just really in a rush to get you a definition of what the church 
is, what the church is. Above Malpros, one consultant I respect so much gave us a, 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 a definition of what the church is, what a local church is now. I, I, I'm talking about local church now. Okay, what the local church is when I was going through the, the training um, certification as a church consultant. And so we're going to look at that very, very carefully and then we're going to move on from there, a local church is an indispensable gathering of believers. Can you see that? Indispensable gathering of believers. Indispensable gathering of professing believers in Christ who under leadership are organized to pursue its mission through its functions to accomplish its purpose. I want you to understand that all these words, we're going to go deep down in the next couple of Mondays. So I'll read again, a local church, a local church, a local church is an indispensable gathering of professing believers in Christ who under leadership are organized to pursue its mission through its functions to accomplish its purpose. And so, we can just get to digging into um, what the early church is as a church. Why they got the blessings of God. Why they got the approval of God in Acts 2, verse 41 to 47. And so that's where we got uh, a church health framework from. Okay, the church health framework is very, very clear. Okay, it's very, very clear. The top side of the fishbone diagram, prayer, ministry, um, evangelism, discipleship, fellowship, and worship. Okay? The early church has these descriptions in Acts of Apostles, but we are now trying to see how the, the church can be aligned with this prescription for today's church operations. Okay? And then, we're going to go deep around our, our, our next um, 20 minutes, I think, will be done. The early church was very descriptive. Okay? And so we try to make sure that that is very, very descriptive uh, very, very, is, is, that is what we prescribe for churches to follow, okay? And so one of the things that we need to get clear, church is about God. It's God's life, it's God's spirit, it's God's nature, it's God's power that makes the church different from other organizations, okay? So you can get a body of believers together, you can get a, a body of, uh, of professing believers together, but if they are void of God's life, if they are void of God's spirit, if they are void of God's nature, if they are void of God's power, that does not make that church great. That does not make that church to be what it is. And so, um, what I, I, I'm saying here is that it's an indispensable gathering of believers, professing believers in Christ. So, that Christ is very foundational. Because there's nothing you can do without a good foundation. If, 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 what can the writers do if there's something wrong with the foundation? And then if there's no leadership, if there's no organization to a purpose, the great commission, the great commandment, and also the church functions I mentioned in the church health framework. These are the church functions. And then we need to get back to the God's nature because God cannot be loved and the church, which is a body, not love. Okay? The nature must be there and then the power must be there. I want to just read a scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. My main emphasis will be verse 6. My main emphasis will be verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. I said I was going to lay a foundation today. So please allow me. There's so much, but you see. Once the foundation is laid, then we can start building. We can start going higher. We can start making some um, greater and deeper points in what we are discussing today. And so I'm going to read um, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. Now, this is, a, is written to a church. In fact, the Corinthian church is such a problematic church. In fact, there are some problems that the Corinthian church went through that I have never seen in all the churches 
in the Bible. Okay, I'm not talking about the Bible now. I'm not talking about the churches in the world. Okay, they are, they are, they are, as a church consultant, we study churches for a living, and some of times the first point of studying of churches is in the Bible. There are quite a lot of churches in the Bible. If Paul wrote letters to the churches, we also have churches in Revelation. And I think as a church leader, as a church pastor, you need to study some of these churches because some of these things that are going on in these churches actually go on in our churches. And we need to learn what Paul said on how to handle some of these issues so that biblically and uh, um, adhering to scriptures, we can actually deal with those issues in our churches. So 1 Corinthians 3 verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spirituals, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it. You see, they were still babies in the Lord, so he could not give them meat. He could not give them meat. He could not give them something strong because they could not process it. And so he ended up giving them milk because they were carnal. They were not spiritual because they were not able to bear it. And in verse 3, see, for ye are not, ye, for ye are carnal. For whereas there is among you envying, stri- and strife, and division. Thank God we have dealt with um, handling conflict. So envy, strife. And conflict. So your church is not going to be the first to go through envying, they're going to go to strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Verse 4. For while one said, I am of Paul, another says what? I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? There was division, there was politic, different political parties. This one is for Paul, that one is for Apollos. And in verse 5. He said, who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom he believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. You see, no matter how gifted you are, no matter how powerful your gifting are, you don't have all the gifts to power that church. You don't have all the gifts to, to provoke God's blessings. Okay, the, no matter their giftings, you need the combinations of all the giftings in the church for God to actually bless that church. Verse 6 says, he said, I have planted, Paul was speaking, I have planted, Apollos has watered, you see, but God gave the increase. Giving the increase is like a blessing. You see, what provoked the blessing is a combination of gifts, is a combination of talent. That's the planting skills and the watering skills. You see, there's no increase if you are good on watering they are alone. There's no increase. God will not give his approval. God will not give his blessings. God will not provide the increase that we desire if there's just only planting. Only planting done. There must be planting and there must be watering. There must be planting. There must be watering. There must be planting and there must be watering. I see one thing I've learned uh, when I studied agri- agri- science in school. Planting is a skill. Even watering is a skill. The way you plant a crop is different from another crop. The way you plant yam is different from the way you plant maize. The way you water those two are also different. In fact, there's a way you can water a plant and the plant dies. There's a way you can plant a seed and the seed will die. Even we, when we know that a seed is very potent. Even when we know that a seed is very powerful because the word of God is a seed by which our churches are planted. Let me go th- down with this first ch- Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 7 says, So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but so it's not, not, not it doesn't matter all your planting, all your watering, but what matters is that we combine it to secure God's blessings, to secure God's uh, increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he, he that watered, but God that gave it the increase. God gave it the increase. It is God's blessings that, and it's God alone in his prerogative measure to release his blessing upon the church. And so verse 8, now he that planted and he that watered are one. And you see, when they are not one, that's where you have envy, strife, and division. But when Paul and Apollo see that they are part of the body, then you can go into provoke God's blessings. Are you blessed this morning? Now, he that planted and he that watereth are one, and everyone shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Verse 6, see, I have planted, 
Apollos watered, but God caused the increase. God caused the increase. So there must be a good combination of the planting skills and the watering skills to secure God's increase upon your life, upon the church, upon the local church, upon the local church. I hope I'm making sense this morning. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, God's will. Uh, in fact, he said, wow, even me, I, 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 I'm, I'm wondering what's coming out from my mouth. He said, wow, thank you for following up. Thank you. Make, uh, if, let, let's see how we can have a one-on-one -on -one chat. God's will, thank you. Um, so in Ephesians chapter 5, I said I'm going to lay foundations today. There's so much to share, but I want to just take it little by little to set, set some foundation in the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23 to 27. You see, one thing I like about that was there's no human being that is not part of a family. And so Paul made an uh, analogy of the church, that's the analogy with Christ and the church, and made that similitude with Christ and the church. So husband and wife, Christ and the church, so that we can be able to understand the depth of the love or the relationship that happens within Christ and the church. Okay? And so in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23, I read, say, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. You see, if Christ is not the head of the church, there's no how you can secure God's blessings. I've seen some churches who are having church worship service, and Jesus is not even mentioned once. Okay, we are not even conscious of the fact that um, the reason why we are gathering is because of God, is because of Christ. Okay, when two or three are gathered together in His name, not in the set man's name, not in the power block's name, in His name, He said, There will I reside. You see, when God resides, God is giving His blessings. One of the blessings you can ever get, have from God is for God to bless you with his presence. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in his name, he said, there, I'm going to make my abode. Everything that has to do with my being, I'm good. So in as much as all of us are there in thousands in our churches, God makes a difference. So Bible says in verse 23, in Ephesians chapter 5, he said, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. You see, one of the things I want us to, 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 to the warning here, as a set man, don't get yourself to a point whereby you are now the savior of the body, of the, of the church. Okay? Let Christ play his role, all right, as the head of the church. Even when you are the set man, the angelos of that congregation, make sure that you are mirroring what God wants to do in that church. Because God cannot bless what he has not directed. God cannot bless what is not in alignment with his values, with his nature, and with his power. So verse 24, therefore, as Christ is subject as church, as the church, as the church is subject unto Christ. I'm reading verse 24 of Ephesians 5. He said, therefore, as the, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husband in everything. Now, what I'm saying is that the church is meant to be subject to Christ in everything. Not just in spiritual matters, in emotional matters, in physical matters. How you build your church, build in such a way that it is in subject to Christ. Everything that the, about the church, the church must be subject to Christ in everything. In verse 25 of Ephesians 5, the husband love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So the love we are trying to do within Christ and the church and cr church and Christ must be lo that love that is unconditional. So if there's no unconditional love in your church, if there's no you are not um, uh, watching each other's backs, you are not loving yourself unconditional, there's no how God will bless because God is love. And if God is love, there's no how the head will be love and the body will not be love. Okay, or the body will be something else. There must be some form of alignment. You see, the more alignment that there is in the in Christ and the church, the more God is going to pour out his blessings upon the church. And so in verse 26, he said, What well, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And verse 27 said, That he might present it to 
himself that's Christ a glorious church now one of the things I want to say here is that God is looking for a glorious church God is looking for a church if I is looking for a church to bless but these are the things that God wants to see your church a glorious church okay he wants I know some of us we if our, most of the, most of our pastors got married to beautiful wives no matter how I mean if I, and I see some of the wives of some of our general overseers they are so beautiful they know how to you know as much as their spiritual eyes were so sharp their physical eyes were sharper because it's not about having some ministry, ministry qualities in the wife but you could see that they were able to get something that was glorious and if you as a human being um know how to get something glorious beautiful i mean something spectacular fabulous you know so beautiful how much more christ christ does not want to embrace a church that is not glorious christ does not want to embrace a church that is dirty christ doesn't want to bless a church or walk with a church or bless or, or embrace a church that has pots that has wrinkles that has any such thing in that class of spot and wrinkle but that it should be holy now, one of the things, when I gave my life to Christ, we had a lot of uh, messages on holiness. If our holiness was so, um, was so, holiness messages were so rampant. But these days, we need to balance up our messages by getting uh, messages on holiness, messages on heaven, on hell, on rapture, on the end times. Okay? Not just having motivational speakings in our church and swaying the church away from the gospel okay i made a, a broadcast some time ago on the gospel center church gospel focused church that um broke us with very 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 useful to every church leader and i'm wrapping up in verse 27 that he might present to it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians 5, verse 23 to 27. Christ and his bride must just agree with all these conditions and qualities. The church, he wants, to, he wants it glorious. He wants it without spot. He wants it without wrinkle or any sin or any dirt or any such thing. Without blemish, without um, 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 the, the, things that, the, the, the things of the flesh. But that it should be what? Holy. Holiness gets God into the equation of what's happening in our churches. Okay, I said the, lo the local church is a, a gathering of professing believers. And those believers are, are meant to be holy. I want to wrap it up here today. And next Monday, I've been able to lay some foundations. Next Monday, we're going to build up from there what kind of features our church needs to possess to make sure that we have the blessings of God. You see, one of the things that I want to clear here as a warning, don't go to a church that God is not blessing. Don't be a part of a church that God has not given approval of. You can be a part of a local church and not be part of a universal church. The fact that you are part of a local church does not mean that you are a part of the universal church. Okay? You are part of a universal church. So please, I want to just wrap it up. I want to stay within 30 minutes okay so next monday we're going to go on from there and then take more deeper dimensions to some of these things please feel free to subscribe to our youtube channel our youtube channel is building up momentum seriously we are we are trying to see how we can get up to 1000 so that we can start creating communities in the youtube space so please go below and subscribe to our uh, magnicap consulting youtube channel there are quite a lot of videos I've done that is making some impact in the space there that will help you. Please, 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 please join the momentum and subscribe below to our channel. All right. So please feel free also to share this video to a church worker, a church pastor, a church staff, a church, a, 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 a church member, and I'm sure they will be glad that you did. I want to wrap it up here. Thank you for staying open up with me. I'm quite I'm seeing quite a lot of people who are who on, 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 the, on the stream this morning. And so I want to thank all of you for following up. We're going to go next Monday on the, the, the church God blesses. The church God blesses. My name again is Ni Dumade. 
I'm the founder, the lead consultant and CEO of Magnicap Consulting. Magnicap Consulting is a church consulting firm that helps local churches to grow healthier through empirical assessment, trainings, and strategy blueprints. So come, let's chat on how everything uh, we can just do to us, to us to help your church in one way or the other. We have quite some good resources, good empirical assessment tools, training models, and helping you to navigate whatever, wherever you are, whatever your size of your church is, um, we will be able to move your church forward with some professional advice in moving your church forward. Okay? And so we want to just get, you have any questions, please feel free. There are some things I said that you want um, more deeper explanations to them. Let me know and then we'll be able to get you some of those um, uh, uh, explanation. Let's get to our Facebook, like our Twitter, um, Facebook channel. Facebook is building up too. Please feel free to like our post, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. As I said, I will be so glad if you make a comment. Sure, you're going to hear back a comment from me. Please subscribe below to our YouTube channel, and we'll be glad you did. If you want to contact me, maybe for training or for counseling or for consulting, um, whatever it is, let us know through the numbers on the screen. And I'm sure you'll be glad. Like, come your way next week, Monday. I say bye-bye and God bless you. And know for sure that I love what you're doing. God bless you.